On the cloud investments, I am not very concerned about them being overly stated. Today, the greatest issue in Taiwan, it is energy. Uh, I, uh, I've done uh, 51 public earnings calls as a CEO, and there will not be a 52nd. Pat Gelsinger, former Intel CEO and partner at Silicon Valley venture capital firm Playground Global, is in Taiwan this week leading a delegation of seven portfolio companies to announce multiple technological breakthroughs and strategic collaborations. The visit highlights how Taiwan's ecosystem transforms cutting-edge innovations into global scale of production, reinforcing its role as a key accelerator for next-generation computing. Gelsinger has had strong ties with Taiwan spanning over 40 years, and this is actually his 50th trip to Taiwan. He noted Taiwan's world-leading speed in scaling innovation from concept to mass production, leveraging precise technology, semiconductor capacity, and expertise in deep tech fields. This visit also included co-hosting an industry exchange dinner with Foxconn chairman Young Liu, symbolizing their shared commitment to advancing Taiwan's deep tech development and continuing their long-term partnership. Overall, the purpose of the visit is to showcase Playground portfolio companies' technological innovations and accelerate commercialization and scale-up through Taiwan's mature industrial ecosystem, combining strengths in semiconductors, advanced packaging, and precision manufacturing to lay the foundation for a new era of high-performance, sustainable innovation. The industry of semiconductors continues to grow. You know, by the end of the decade, will be in excess of a trillion dollars. Uh, expected. This is foundational for all of technology. Technology is foundational for all of industry. Industry is foundational for all of the economy. You know, everything rides on the foundations of semiconductors. And as such, you know, we believe, I believe, that uh, having more resilience to those supply chains is the best policy. I'm going to see more built in the U.S. That doesn't mean there's less in Taiwan. It just says more of the growth should occur in other geographies uh, like the U.S. You know, clearly TSMC is building in the U.S. I encourage them to have more advanced nodes and more R&D uh, in the U.S. because it simply is better policy for the world. It is so important to the future of the world. We need more resilience in the underlying supply chains of the most important technology, semiconductors. Uh, on the cloud investments, I am not very concerned about them being overly stated today because fundamentally they're limited by energy availability. So essentially you have energy growth limiting the capital deployment. And maybe we'll start a long-term data center development. Maybe we'll uh, say we're building a data center for two gigawatts of AI capacity, and maybe we'll spend a couple hundred million dollars putting concrete in, putting the basic uh, building infrastructure, but we will not spend the billions of dollars on chips until we have energy availability. Right? And fundamentally, that becomes a buffer or a limiter on how overhyped the industry gets. And energy capacity in the world has been growing 3 or 4% per year. Right? And maybe in the AI bubble, it's arced up slightly you know, to like 5% growth in the world for energy capacity. And it's fundamentally limited by you know, nuclear capacity, you know, the uh, renewable capacity, and uh, gas uh, turbines, which now have uh, seven or eight year lead times. So that ability to radically increase the energy capacity of the world isn't keeping up with the very rapid rate of announcements of bigger data centers. It fundamentally will limit the overhype of the uh, bubble. So fundamentally, I don't think it has that much risk. You know, cloud vendors have real economics under their businesses. You know, they're supported by uh, real profits. So it isn't like the internet bubble where you had no business models supporting it. You know, here you have solid business models, solid business cases for it in the long term, and a natural limiter on how overhyped that investment cycle becomes. Taiwan, you know, one of the fundamental issues, if Taiwan was to play a more prominent world uh, position in the world's innovation cycle, is more software. Right? Uh, you know, and for it, uh, uh, you're the place that hardware right, realization occurs for the world. Right? It all happens here. You're not a place that's known for your innovations in architecture or software. So to me, you know, if I was planning policies in Taiwan, I'd put particular focus on those areas because some of the hardware limitations are limited by the natural resource limitations of Taiwan.
today the greatest issue in Taiwan, right, isn't even software, right, and architecture. It is energy, right? You are not in a position to have a resilient energy supply chain, and that I think puts your entire industry in a very precarious state. You need more energy resilience in Taiwan if you're going to continue to grow the economy of Taiwan. Uh, I, uh, I've done uh, 51 public earnings calls as a CEO, and there will not be a 52nd. <laughs> right. um, and uh, you know, one of the hardest adjustments of not being the CEO is not being in charge. <clears throat> right? As I would say, my hands were on the wheel for uh, 51 quarters. And uh, for that, adjusting to being a coach, to being a partner, to helping the CEOs, and being an advisor to them, as opposed to directing them, I'm used to being in charge. Do this. Right? No, it's like, I think this is a good idea to do. Uh, and uh, that adjustment is one I'm still making. But uh, hopefully uh, the portfolio customers will, uh, or CEOs that you see here, they will keep uh, telling me where uh, you know, I'm uh, not to do their job.